Merry Christmas, everyone. I want to thank you for coming tonight to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Uh, Christmas is a wonderful season, and we spend time throughout Advent uh, just really uh, living in the uh, long-awaited arrival of our King, and that's what we're celebrating tonight. So truly, there is joy to the world. Amen. And that's what we're going to sing tonight. Just a few announcements as we get going. Uh, in the end of your pews are um, candles for our candlelight song at the end of the service. If you don't have enough, just look in the pews ahead of you. There should be a few in, in, on each end of every pew, but there should be enough. Just go ahead and feel free to, to secure those and get those ready. At the end of service, uh, there's going to be a special time of communion. And uh, I'll give some instructions on that throughout the message tonight. And I want to invite all his believers to partake in that time as well with us together. And then afterward, you are all invited to kind of stick around. This is going to be kind of a, a short service in here, but part of the night is we want to have some time and fellowship and celebration. And so uh, afterwards, there's going to be some cookies and some punch out on the coffee bar. You're welcome to have some of that. We have three different places throughout the church that you are more than welcome to take some pictures if you like. Uh, we will move some of this uh, music stains at the end of the service, and you can take a, a picture here if you'd like. There's a tree right there in the foyer if you like. And then in the back with our fellowship hall, uh, there is a, a, a nice uh, backdrop of Christmas tree and banners back there that you can feel free to take pictures in front of too to just kind of have a, a Christmas memory with your family of what you were doing in 2021. And, uh, and lastly, I just want to say thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to worshiping our Lord tonight together. Could we sing? Oh, come thou rod of Jesse, 
depths of hell thy people say and give them victory o'er the grave rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee O Israel O come thou Our spirits by thine advent here Disperse the gloomy clouds of night And death's dark shadows put to flight Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to Oh, come thou key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high and close the paths to misery. Rejoice, rejoice. shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voice Christ was born. Oh, night divine. Oh, night. Oh, night divine. Truly he taught us to love. And his gospel is peace. Change shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy. Praise we let all within us praise his holy name.
Hey, baby. <laughs> well, we made it, church. The weary world rejoices, amen? What a year, what a time, what a season we've been through. Each one of us in here can attest and testify to how things seemed may have been at times uncertain, but each and every one of us can testify to the Lord's work in our life if we really truly dig down deep and we can really truly say that we can rejoice tonight. Amen? Because Jesus is our Lord and he has come. Let me pray. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord. Tonight's the long awaited night, Lord, that we celebrate, that we rejoice, that we sing, that we hear the story, that we receive the babe. We thank you so much that you came down to meet us, to be with us, to show us how to live and to give us life. Lord, we can never repay you for all the love that you've shown us. Lord, we love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strength, with all our soul, and we want to follow your command to love each other as ourselves. So tonight as we worship you, Lord, we just want to give you thanks and praise and glory for everything that you've been to us this year that you've walked with us through every step, Lord, that you've never left our side. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. As always on Christmas Eve, I, I, I must read the Christmas story. I, I don't want us to ever leave. As many times we may have heard it or preached through it, we really need to look at the Christmas story. And, and I want to do that right now. I'd like to read uh, from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. You can just listen. It will not be on the screen. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told." We're going to take a moment tonight on this most holy night, and we're going to light all four of our Advent candle wreaths, candles again. And as we do, I want us to be reminded of the things that we've maybe not only talked about, but things that we've experienced, the, the hope and the peace and the joy and the love of Christ. And we're so reminded of, in this season of Advent, this expectation and the preparation and the proclamation and the revelation of Jesus is coming, not just now, but as promised to return someday. And so now that's what we're going to do. We're going to light these four candles. The candle of hope. The candle of peace. The candle of love. And the candle of joy. 
now we write what we light the Christ candle and as we do we rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of a baby born in a manger let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes and let's pray for just a moment here gracious and mighty King Tonight we celebrate your goodness to us and we join in the triumph and joy that is this Christmas season and every Christmas season. Lord, as your love has been revealed to us in all its fullness, we pray that your love, that that very love that you've lavished upon us may abound in our hearts during this special day and every day of our lives. God, grant us the spirit of Christ that we may live in the fullness of his character every day because it's in his holy and mighty name we pray amen tonight i i wanted to do something that i felt would be special something a little different than just a normal sermon and and i wanted us to really the lord's really been opening up this idea this this whole narrative story from the beginning to the end of our lord and savior jesus christ because advent is a time of of expectation and anticipation and and excitement and waiting not only for the birth of our king but we have to also tie in the the reality that jesus is coming back again and life is short and we only have so much time to be ready for that return. And so tonight we're going to walk from the stable where, where Jesus was born and placed in a manger all the way to the very last thing he did with his disciples before he died. And so we're going to walk from the stable to his table and at the end we're going to have communion. I want to share one more passage with you today. From the Old Testament, from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, you have probably are familiar with this. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And it's my prayer this evening that through tonight and into tomorrow as we celebrate with our families, that even just one of these attributes or the attributes of Christ, these characteristics, this identity of who he is, would be a very real thing for you. And as we gather tonight, I want to, like I said earlier, I want to invite each and every one of you who are believers in Christ. That's so vital. And, And if you're not a believer in Christ, See me, and if you're ready to give your life to the Lord tonight, it can happen. It's as easy as repenting of our sins and asking him into our life. I'm reminded in the Bible that it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all our sins. In Romans, he says that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. This is why Jesus came. He came to save the world. And I want to invite you tonight, if you're a believer, to his table. You know, it's always such a meaningful time when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, especially meaningful during times of Christmas season. And there are many things that we do during the season, isn't there? We shop, we eat, we spend time with family, we eat, <laughs> we take some time off, we eat again, right? Do we see the pattern? Uh, you know, it, it's, and that's okay. And I, I, here in a little bit, we're going we're gonna to eat again. And hopefully we'll all have some time tomorrow to eat again and hear the laughter of children, which is such a blessing to the church. Let them go, mom. Let them have fun. <laughs> oh, she's our children's director, by the way. And so <laughs> she's... <laughs> uh, For the most part, all those things, shopping and eating and and all these different things, kids getting wild in church, those are great things to happen within the community of believers. Amen? Especially the eating part, right? We could probably eat a little less. At least I could. But this season, this, this season of Christmas, it reminds us of the innocence of Jesus as a little baby boy who came into this world. And it all started in what you see in that picture behind me, just a little manger, just in a little stable. I want you to look at that for just a moment. Does that really look like a place fit for a king to be born? I think Mary didn't even notice. All I think Mary knew was that this sure looked like a safe place or at least the safest place for her son to be born. 
Think about it. No one could hurt him. His birth, the birth of Jesus Christ, changed our world. It changed everything. And when we truly encounter Christ, he changes everything in our life. If you haven't experienced that, I hope you do. I hope you do tonight. Jesus' birth literally stopped time, at least for a moment. B.C. became A.D., and, you know, we still mark time in this way. He lived his life basically with very little recognition. He, this was the, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the one who would come and die and save the world, lived his life with little to no recognition. And I'm reminded that on his 12th birthday, the Bible tells us that he went to the temple. I remember in the story, it says that his parents left. And I could just imagine uh, as he stayed in Jerusalem, each one's probably thinking that they're with him and he's not. And then there was that brief moment, kind of like in the, in the Home Alone series, right? When they screamed, Kevin, I wonder if Mary didn't say, Jesus, like where's he at, you know? Where was Jesus? Where's our 12-year-old boy? They couldn't find him for three days. I want to tell you what. I would not want to be in a conversation to God and say, hey, God, you you know that uh, Messiah you left with us? Um, Yeah, we lost him. Uh, (laughs) can, Can you help us find him? When they did find him, guess what he was doing? And he was talking with all the doctors and the teachers and the lawyers and all these different people in the elite crowd. And he was asking questions and he was even answering questions. And it says in the scripture that everyone was amazed. They were astounded, astounded, or they were amazed. Let's just leave it at that. I'm sorry. <laughs> we didn't hear much of Jesus until much later in his life. In his ministry when it began around the age 30. Stay with me here. We're following this track from the manger, from the stable to the table. (laughs) He begins his ministry and what does Jesus do? He begins healing the sick. He begins teaching what we know to be the gospel. He, he's teaching about the way of life and, and who we are in faith as God's children. He trained his disciples. He upset the religious crowd. So much so that what did they do? They tried to kill him. They tried to get rid of him, but they couldn't. They tried. They tried with all they could, but they couldn't. They beat him. They mocked him. They even spit on Jesus. He was tortured. He was crucified. He didn't face the typical life of a king. Many people wanted Jesus to come and to sit on the throne and to sit on the crown and overthrow the government. But Jesus said, I came to save that which is lost. The Bible says, at one point, the Son of Man didn't even have a place to lay his head. And then, the night before they crucified him, Jesus observed what we now call the Last Supper. And so we move now from this stable all the way to the table. Life at this point was no longer safe for Jesus. And he told his disciples sitting around the table, he said, every time you do this, do it in remembrance of me because I will always be with you. Always. And I'm reminded of another occasion in Scripture when it says that he would never leave them. He would never forsake them. That he would never give up on us. And friends, I want to tell you those words are for you today. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will be by your side forever. There's seasons in our life where we drift away from God. Where there's seasons where we move away from Him and oh, out of our faith, and sometimes back into faith. And and the and the circumstances of life usually dictate that because sometimes things are tough and and rough things in our life begin to happen all around us. But here's the thing about it: He takes every step with you. Believe that. When we are in Christ, when we have asked him to be our Savior, the Lord of our life, it's not for that moment. It's forever. He will walk with you in the darkest of times. And he will celebrate with you 
in the highest of times. And tonight as we drink from this cup, you and I are reminded that, you know, we are often as Christians, <laughs> even people who are just starting out in our faith, just starting to have this glimmer of hope and, 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 and believe that we're often called to do things that are not very comfortable, but they're the right thing. Life is not always about being comfortable. Life is about being committed. And I'm here to tell you tonight, you're committed to something. The question is, what? He is our example. And may we follow that example and walk in faith. As he walked his years from that stable to the table, and then gave his life for us. He did it because he loves you. I want to invite the worship team to come back up. And I want to invite my ushers to come forward. We're going to have a, a candlelit song here. So if you want your candles ready. My ushers are going to uh, light their candles on the Advent uh, Christ candle here. And they're going to begin to walk down the aisles and light your candles well. And I would just ask if you would please, let's do this in as much silence as we can. And then to light your neighbor's candle as well. But here's the message I have for you tonight in all this. As our candles are being lit and as we sing Silent Night, take a moment to reflect on this year. I know many of you have been through a tremendous ordeal this year. Reflect on all that it has been and know that Jesus has been and is with you always, no matter what, and that he is also prepared to move forward with you as well. Scripture tells us to examine ourselves before we do this because Communion is something to be taken seriously. And that's why I said, this is his table and the table is for his believers. If you're not a believer in Christ Almighty, please don't partake. But I would ask for you to take a moment tonight and to consider your relationship with Jesus. It doesn't say that if you have to have the perfect life to partake, it just says you have to be a believer. And when we're a believer, we're going to take the time as we sing this song and we're going to reflect and we're going to seek Jesus. Lord, what is it in my life that's getting in the way of a deeper relationship with you? And just surrender it to him. Ask the Lord to test your attitudes and your heart and your actions. Ask yourself, am I truly aware of the significance of the Lord's Supper? The words that Jesus spoke, the sacrament he instituted himself. And if so, would you surrender everything and walk in faithful obedience with the one who we're celebrating tonight, the one who has come. And after the song, just some special announcements, instructions here. After the song is over, after the song is over, take the time in the song to examine and reflect. But after it's over, I want you to walk down when you're ready. Extinguish your candles and place them in the bins next to the communion table and receive your elements and go back to your seats and we'll partake together. Okay, do we got that? So once the song's over, just come down, extinguish your candles and place them in the bins and grab your elements and then you may be seated and we'll partake together after the song.
when you're ready, you may come and receive your elements. As I had said earlier, this is such a special time, and um, sometimes I feel like we, we can just get into the motions of doing communion, and uh, it's so much more than that, and it just brings me such joy to know that Jesus took the time aside when he knows he's about to face death to break bread with his disciples, and he tells them, he says, whenever you eat of this bread, 
do it in remembrance of me. He said, this is my body which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may eat. Scripture tells us that in the same way after supper, talking with his disciples, he took the cup and he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which was spilled out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The Bible tells us that whenever we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, that we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he returns. And that's Jesus saying, I'm always going to be with you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I've walked with you this far, and I'm prepared to walk with you until I bring you home. Believe that tonight. Believe it. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you so much for the gift of your son. We thank you so much that you humbled yourself and you came to earth and you lived the life of a servant, Lord, for us. Lord, I thank you so much that not only do we celebrate your first coming, but we can truly celebrate your second coming. And Lord, I just pray tonight that each and every one of us here would know, would know the hope that we have in you would know the peace that you have given us, would know the joy and the strength that's found in our Lord, and that we would know the love that you demonstrated to us, that while we were still sinners, you sent your son to die for us. We thank you that Jesus is the completion of all things, and that one day he's going to come back and call us home for eternity to be in glory with you forever. Lord, be with us this Christmas season and every season of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, uh, you are dismissed from this portion tonight. Once again, I invite you and encourage you to stick around. Have just a few few moments of, of, uh, of fellowship. Have some coffee. Have some punch. Take some pictures if you like. And uh, I pray you have a, a wonderful Merry Christmas.